world strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, dear Lord, close to Thee. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with my burden shares? None but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee. Today, we're continuing to look at fasting and prayer. I'm Pastor Budupem of Temple of Praise, and I've got here with me Elder Tina Cave, also of Temple of Praise. Hi. We're going to look at some passages and discuss them, and then leave you with questions to, to discuss in your GMH groups. So I'm going to share the first set of passages. Here goes. Okay. All right, uh, Elder Tina, would you like to read? Sure. The first passage is from Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Next passage is from Acts chapter 14, verses 21 to 23. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. 
We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Thank you very much. What do these passages tell us about fasting? Well, to me, the first passage in particular um, shows that it was something that was expected of them, that they did, you know, they just did routinely. It wasn't, a, it wasn't something they were just asked to do at that moment. It was, you know, it, it was what they did and they, they did it just all the time when they prayed. Um, it was um, while, while they were praying and fasting that the Holy Spirit actually spoke to them. And, you know, if they hadn't been praying and fasting, I don't know whether that would have happened, but mm. they spoke to them and was telling them to set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work that God had for them to do. Mm. The second passage um, was a little bit more specific. They knew that they were going to um, have spiritual needs because they knew they were going to face hardships. Mm. And so they prayed and fasted before they appointed the elders to do the God, work that God had for them. Yes, thank you. So fasting can be done generally and also at specific times or for specific purposes. Um, fasting, we know, is a spiritual discipline that should be practiced at any time of the year. And it's always associated with prayer. We fast so that we can pray better. Um, at Lent, Christians, many Christians give up various things, which is great, but fasting is specifically about giving up food, and in some cases, food and drink. Lent itself provides us with an excellent opportunity to join with the rest of the church in fasting. Christians, I think, sometimes refer to Matthew 19, uh, Matthew 9, verse 15, where Jesus said that the guests of the bridegroom do not need to fast when the bridegroom is with them. However, the bridegroom has left, he has gone off to heaven, and so Christians do need to fast. They need to fast as a matter of course. Okay, we're going to look at the next uh, passage. So here it is. And again, I'm going to ask you if you can read this. Okay. Well, this passage is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 12, and verse 18, and it's taken from the New Living Translation. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the whole of God's armour so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Mm -hmm. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, what do we learn from this with regard to our lives as disciples? Well, to me, it's that um, it makes me aware that there's spiritual forces around us everywhere and that often the battles that we face aren't just sort of of this world, they're often a spiritual battle that's behind them. Mm -hmm. And you know, God's telling us quite clearly we need to put on his armour. And you know, that not only helps us to fight the devil, but it also protects us as well. And one of the ways of doing that is to pray and to fast, you know, and we should use all these tools that God's given us. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we're told to pray on all occasions. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think that some cultures are a lot more conscious of the spiritual nature of the battles that we fight than others. I think the West, there tends to be less awareness of it. But in some cultures, Christians in certain countries and cultures are a lot more aware and they're much more in the habit of fasting and praying. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, some of the things we, we come across and we think, oh, oh this is just a, an awkward situation or an awkward person. No, there's a spiritual power behind it seeking to obs obs obstruct um, the will of God. Okay, we're going to move on to the third passage. And this passage is here. Let me get to it. Yes. 
Here it is. Okay. All right. Again, would you be willing to read this? Sure. Okay. Um, again, it's from the New Living Version, and it's Mark chapter 9, verses 17 to 18, and 25 to 29. Yeah. One of the people said, Teacher, I brought my son to you. He has a demon in him and cannot talk. Wherever the demon takes him, it throws him down. Spit runs from his mouth, grinds his teeth. He's getting weaker. I asked your followers to put the demon out, but they could not. Jesus saw that many people were gathering together in a hurry. He spoke sharp words to the demon. He said, demon, you who cannot speak or hear, I say to you, come out of him. Do not ever go into him again. The demon gave a cry. It threw the boy down and came out of him. The boy was so much like a dead man that the people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him and he stood up. When Jesus went into the house, his followers asked him when he was alone, why could we not put out the demon? He said to them, the only way this kind of demon is put out is by prayer and by going without food so that you can pray better. Thank you. And we see that the voice version of that last uh, verse says, Jesus said, that sort of powerful spirit can only be conquered with much prayer and fasting. So this tells me that there are different levels of spiritual powers that are opposed to the kingdom of God. Some can be dealt with just by prayer, but others require preparation by prayer and fasting. Because if we remember, in Mark 6, verses 7 and 13, we'd already been told that the Lord had sent out the apostles two by two, giving them authority to, cut, to heal people and drive out, drive out impure spirits. And they had been successful, but now they'd come across one they couldn't deal with. Isn't that right? It is, yeah. You know, and that sort of, again, sort of speaks that, you know, when tougher situations occur, we, we need to show that we mean business with God. Mm -hmm. so that was it. Because Jesus said there, you need to pray and fast. So we need to show that it's something that we really want. And by doing that, we do sacrifice when we when we fast. And by doing that, we're allowing God to work in us. I think yeah. in this situation, the fasting actually sharpens our prayers. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lord Jesus told them what needed to be done. And then he cast out the demon, which meant that he had a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, which is why he was able to deal with all the cases brought to him. So lack of fasting with prayer will make our ministry ineffective. I just wanted to ask one other question. I know that some people believe in fasting so much that they see it as a way of getting whatever they want from God. But does fasting and praying always guarantee that you get what you're praying for? No, I mean, fasting isn't a sort of magic wand. And, you know, God, God always knows what's best for us. And sometimes his answer is no. And mm. we have to trust him in that. Mm. But by praying and fasting, we know that we have done all that we can and we just have to trust that whatever the answer is it's for our good that's right because he's sovereign and we are all subject to his sovereign will but i know that when we fast and pray with the right attitude even though we may not see the result immediately or get the result that we were looking for at least we gain something maybe we've got to know him better or we've learned to rely on him more or sometimes we just have to trust when he's instructed us to fast and pray, we've done it, that it's accomplished something that he knows about, even if we don't. Okay, thank you. We're just going to now look at the questions to be discussed in the GMH groups. The first one is, how did you first learn about fasting and pray? The second one is, Share testimonies about your experiences of gaining breakthroughs through fasting and praying. I think it would be really encouraging for us to share that in, in our GMH group. And could you read the third question, please, Elder? Is the Holy Spirit prompting you to fast and pray about a particular matter at present? It could be a personal to you or to someone else, or be a national or even a global matter. 
Or do you feel him challenging you about the need to commit yourselves generally to more frequent fasting and praying? Thank you. Okay, we're going to leave those questions with you and hope that you'll have a really meaningful and um, fruitful discussion in your GMH groups. God bless you.